So good morning. Thank you uh, very much for inviting me to be here today uh, to talk about the work that the United States government is doing to protect and to restore the Great Lakes. Ah, I'm moving up in the world. <laughs> We're very proud of the progress that we've made, particularly since the start of the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. As most of you know, President Obama launched the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative shortly after taking office to better focus the efforts of the 16 federal agencies that manage over 140 different programs that focus on the Great Lakes. As part of this multi-agency effort, an action plan was developed to, to guide implementation of the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. The action plan identifies five focus areas. Toxic substances and areas of concern, invasive species, nearshore health and non-point source pollution, habitat and wildlife protection and restoration, and accountability, education, monitoring, evaluation, communication, and partnerships. Here's a graph showing the relative share of Great Lakes Restoration Initiative resources that have been allocated to each focus area since 2010. While these percentages have remained fairly consistent from year to year during the first three years of the initiative, it's important to recognize that annual expenditures in each focus area have decreased since 2010 because the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative budget has decreased. The Great Lakes Restoration Initiative budget has varied from $475 million during 2010 to $300 million in both 2011 and 2012. At this point, we don't know how much money we'll have to work with in 2013. The president budget, president's budget seeks to hold funding steady at $300 million during fiscal year 13. But as you can see from this graph, the most recent action in the House of Representatives provides only $250 million for the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative in 2013. Despite this uncertainty over the budget for next year, we continue to do as much work as possible around the Great Lakes. Since 2010, more than $1 billion has been appropriated for Great Lakes Restoration Initiative projects, and more than 1,000 projects are in various stages of completion. If you want to learn more about the individual projects that have been funded so far, please visit greatlakesrestoration.us, the website, you'll find a wide range of projects that span the five focus areas in the action plan. And while we continue to do work in all of the five focus areas, the federal agencies are working together to identify major priorities for the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative to target for action and increased attention this year and next. The first of those three priorities is invasive species. And at the top of that list is Asian carp. We're also combating terrestrial invasive species, especially Phragmites, that thrive along Great Lakes lake shores. The second Great Lakes Restoration Initiative priority is reducing excess phosphorus runoff, which contributes to harmful algal blooms in impaired watersheds. Harmful algal blooms in the Great Lakes are a problem that have been increasing in frequency and in severity in recent years. To address this problem this year and next, the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative will be increasing investments in three watersheds. The Lower Fox River, which drains into Green Bay in Lake Michigan, the Saginaw River, which flows into Saginaw Bay, and the Maumee River which is the largest source of phosphorus loading in the western basin of Lake Erie. The third major Great Lakes Restoration Initiative priority is cleaning up Great Lakes areas of concern. 
locations that have the worst legacies of toxic contamination. As most of you know, these areas of concern were initially designated in 1987 in the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. But so far, only the Oswego River area of concern, located on Lake Ontario, has been delisted on the U.S. side of the border. Now, however, we are using Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funding to improve that admittedly dismal record. And we're already beginning to see significant progress. The Environmental Protection Agency and the state of Pennsylvania have started the process for delisting the Presque Isle Bay area of concern. Public comment recently closed on this delisting proposal and those comments are under consideration. Stay tuned for a final decision later this year. In addition, EPA has targeted the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, all of the federal agencies have targeted four areas of concern where we're working to complete all of the actions required for delisting this year. And we've targeted five additional areas of concern where we believe it's possible to complete the work required for delisting by the end of 2014. In 2012, we're working to complete all of the management actions required to delist the Ashtabula River AOC in Ohio, the River Raisin AOC in Michigan, the Sheboygan River AOC in Wisconsin, and the White Lake AOC in Michigan. In 2013 and 2014, we will be focusing on the Waukegan AOC in Illinois and four more Michigan AOCs, Deer Lake, St. Mary's River, St. Clair River, and the Manistee Harbor. So what kind of work do we need to do to get these areas of concern delisted? In the Sheboygan River area of concern, we're working to complete four sediment removal projects and three habitat restoration projects, an effort that involves EPA, other federal agencies, and state and local partners. To complete the four sediment projects, we're using Superfund, Great Lakes Legacy Act, and Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funding to remove more than 400,000 cubic yards of PCB contaminated sediment from the river at an estimated cost of $80 million. The final phase of dredging on this project began in August and will continue 24 seven through the end of 2012. We actually save money by dredging around the clock. At the same time that this dredging work is going on, three habitat restoration projects will be completed in the Sheboygan River area of concern. The habitat restoration projects include in-stream fish habitat improvements, shoreline stabilization, and removal of invasive plant species such as Phragmites. In addition to the ecological benefits, these projects have economic benefits. We're putting a lot of people to work cleaning up these AOCs, and when the work is done, the positive economic benefits will begin to flow for these Great Lakes communities. And let me just say, the work that we're doing in these AOCs illustrate a point that President Obama frequently makes, and that's that we don't have to choose between a strong environment, or a clean environment and a strong economy. Indeed, a clean environment is a critical building block for a strong economy, for an economy in an America built to last. The next AOC is the River Raisin AOC. Uh, to delist the River Raisin AOC, four habitat projects and a sediment cleanup need to be completed. The state of Michigan has received Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funding to implement two habitat restoration projects at Sterling Park and one on Sterling Island. And the city of Monroe has received Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funding for a river raisin fish passage project. In July, EPA began the final sediment cleanup project in the River Raisin AOC. 
EPA expects to remove approximately 100,000 cubic yards of PCB contaminated sediment and our goal is to have the sediment cleanup completed by next month and we're working diligently to have the four habitat restoration projects completed by the end of 2012. We will also finish all of the work needed to delist the White Lake area of concern near, near Muskegon this year. Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funding is currently being used to complete seven habitat restoration projects in the White Lake AOC. This is an example of the type of habitat restoration work underway. The area shown in this photo looks like this today. In particular, note the native plants that replaced the invasive plants that once dominated the area. The remaining habitat restoration projects at the White Lake area of concern will be completed in the next month. The Ashtabula River area of concern is the last that we're trying to complete all of the man management actions in required for delisting by the end of 2012. I'm happy to report that all habitat restoration work needed in the AOC has been completed and the last dredging project will begin soon. So that's an update on the four AOCs, Ashtabula, River Raisin, Sheboygan, and White Lake that we're working to complete in 2012. Now just a word about the five AOCs that we've targeted to complete by the end of 2014, starting with Waukegan Harbor. Just last week, EPA started a new dredging project in Waukegan Harbor to remove 170,000 cubic yards of PCB contaminated sediment. This dredging work is being conducted through EPA's Superfund program. At the same time, Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funding is being used for several habitat restoration projects in the Waukegan Harbor AOC. These coordinated actions are expected to be complete in 2014. The Deer Lake area of concern is located in the southern shore of Lake Superior near Marquette. Just one project needs to be completed here before this area of concern can be delisted. The Partridge Creek diversion in the city of Ishpeming. Deer Lake area of concern, or I should say in 2010, EPA awarded the city of Ishpeming a $2 million grant to begin the process of diverting Partridge, Partridge Creek from the abandoned mine works beneath the city where mercury leaches into the water that flows into Deer Lake. Earlier this summer, I awarded an additional $6 million grant to the city of Ishpeming for the second part of this project and work has already commenced. When the project is complete, Partridge Creek will no longer flow through the abandoned mine under Ishpeming, and mercury contamination will no longer flow into Deer Lake. In addition, Partridge Creek, which local people remember as a terrific trout stream, will be restored to its original location. The next day you'll see on the list is St. Mary's River, which is also in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. During 2011, EPA partnered with Consumers Energy on a Great Lakes Legacy Act project to remove 24,000 cubic yards of PAH contaminated sediment in the St. Mary's River. That work removed the last contaminated sediment on the U.S. side of the border. Now the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative is funding the design of a restoration project in the upper Little Rapids area of the St. Mary's River. This project will restore the rapids that used to be in the part of the river shown in this picture. When the project is completed, over 70 acres of rapids will be located here, providing habitat needed to reintroduce Lake Whitefish and Lake Herring. The project will also increase opportunities for other fish species to forage, spawn, and nurse in this newly created habitat. The habitat restoration is the last management action that needs to be completed to delist this area of concern. At the Manistique River area of concern, also in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, EPA removed PCB contaminated sediment from the river and harbor using our Superfund authority. We're currently evaluating whether additional management actions will be required in this AOC. And finally, at the St. Clair River area of concern in southeastern Michigan, the focus is on restoring habitat. 
Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funding is being used to construct fish spawning reefs and a nursery area in the St. Clair Delta. Additional funding has been provided to the U.S. Geological Survey to create up to four more acres of sturgeon spawning habitat at two more reef sites. And you'll be hearing a bit more about that uh, in just a minute when I hand off a presentation to my colleague at the Department of Interior. In addition, uh, the City of Port Huron has been awarded Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funding to restore almost 5,000 square feet of rocky bottom fish habitat, to restore and stabilize over 300 linear feet of riverbank, and to improve water quality by re reducing erosion and nutrient runoff, and to provide public recreation areas. All of these St. River Area of Concern projects are expected to be completed by 2014. One final point before I wrap up this discussion of Great Lakes areas of concern. We're continuing to make progress in all of the areas of concern around the Great Lakes, not just the ones targeted for completion in the next couple of years. We're working around the Great Lakes on habitat restoration projects, like this one in Roxana Marsh in the Grand Calumet River AOC. And we're cleaning up contaminated sediment in all of the areas of concern. As you can see from this graph, we have significantly accelerated the pace of sediment removal in the areas of concern during the past several years. And working with our federal, state, and local partners, we plan to sustain and even increase this level of activity to finish the work that we need to do to clean up the remaining areas of concern. So that's the U.S. government's progress report on areas of concern. Bottom line, we are finally making real progress on delisting the areas of concern on the U.S. side of the border.